It's now my distinct pleasure and a very high honor to present our commencement speaker. Are you in for a treat? Dr. Rick Rigsby is a Bay Area native and former award-winning journalist who followed a television news career with six years of graduate school culminating with a PhD from the University of Oregon. A college professor for two decades, Rick spent most of those years at Texas A&M University where he served as character coach and chaplain for the Aggies football team. I think they needed that chaplain. <laughs> Go Kia haulers. <laughs> he now devotes his full attention to empowering people worldwide, from presenting leadership principles in Nigeria to speaking to Fortune 500 companies in the Americas, Europe, and up to Canada. He offers common sense wisdom to those desiring to rise to greater levels of excellence. Throughout three decades in broadcasting and academia, Rick Rigsby has received numerous commendations and awards. He's a two-time recipient of the Outstanding Teaching Award given by Texas A&M's College of Liberal Arts. In addition to academic publications, Dr. Rigsby is the author of Lessons from a Third Grade Dropout and he has generously provided a copy for each of our graduates. So please join me in a joyous, warm Cal Maritime welcome for our commencement speaker, Dr. Rick Rigsby. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Joey and Ted, that was awesome, first of all. Great job to President Cropper, and to Captain Bolton, and to Rear Admiral De Quattro, to the trustees of the CSU system, to the wonderful alumni, and to one of the greatest faculty in all of the world. You see, California Maritime, they attract the greatest faculty members anywhere. To the parents, the grandparents, and the aunts and the uncles, the cousins and the brothers and sisters, but most of all, to the graduating class of 2017. What's up, y'all? I won't be long. We have a lot of activities. Some of them will go into the late hours of the night. But I come from a predominantly black family. I don't know if y'all can tell that or not. And I happen to be an ordained minister. Now that's a lethal combination when it comes to time. Give Big Daddy some chicken wings, I'll talk to you all day long. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. But in the words of King Henry VIII, as he spoke to each of his six wives, I won't keep you long, but... I will be very brief and on point. I promise you that. Cadets, y'all are graduating from one of the greatest institutions in the world. There is no education like a maritime education. And for all of you in the audience, the curricula is rigorous, tough, demanding, compelling, forcing you to be your best and to give your best. The sacrifice, young people, that you went through, most of us will never, ever know. But here's my message. To whom much is given, much is required. You have been blessed, invested in by this great faculty. You won't ever receive the kind of knowledge that you've received during your time here. But I wish that you would couple that knowledge with something else. Wisdom. Wisdom from a mother. Wisdom from a father, a grandmother, a grandfather, an uncle, an aunt, a friend, a, a, a favorite professor. Wisdom from somewhere. That, that combination 
will keep you centered regardless of the turbulence of the sea. That, that combination will keep you well grounded regardless of the ups and downs of life. That, that combination will cause you to make an impact, to grow your influence. It was John Maxwell who said leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. Your ability to influence people within the sphere of your periphery will determine the impact that you make. Will Cal Maritime graduates make an impact? They make an impact all over the world. Making an impact. It's not about making a nice impression. It's about making an impact. It's about doing your best. I learned how to make an impact from the wisest person I ever met in my life, a third grade dropout. Wisest and dropout in the same sentence is rather oxymoronic, like jumbo shrimp. Mm-hmm. Like fun run. Ain't nothing fun about it. Like Microsoft works. Y'all don't hear me. I used to say like country music, but I've lived in Texas so long. I, I love country music now. I, in fact, yeah. I hunt, I fish, I have cowboy boots and cowboy. Y'all, I'm a black neck, red neck. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? No longer oxymoronic for me to say country music. And it's not oxymoronic for me to say third grade and dropout. That third grade dropout, the wisest person I ever met in my life, who taught me to combine knowledge and wisdom to make an impact, was my father. My daddy grew up in the piney woods of East Texas, a little town called Huntsville, Texas. After World War II was over, my father decided to be the only one in his family to migrate west. And in the 1950s, he found his way to the San Francisco Bay Area fell in love with a forklift driver. My mother was a bad mamma jamma, let me tell you right now, baby. <laughs> Didn't need a man, he was just there. <laughs> My mother was a forklift driver over at the Benicia Arsenal, uh, where they would, uh, she would provide the services to support uh, the war efforts during World War II. In the 50s, my mother and father get married, and they migrate to this area. My father, gets a job as a cook, a simple cook. Wisest man I ever met in my life. Just a simple cook at some school called California Maritime Academy. Oh, come on with you, come on. You have no idea how thrilled I am to be here. This is so emotional. This may be my favorite speech of all time, because y'all are my family. I can't wait to take a picture with you. <laughs> I grew up on this campus. I was born and reared here. Lived at 1141 Louisiana Street, Vallejo, California, 94590. My daddy used to work in something called the galley, the mess hall. Now it's the dining center. <laughs> And it's a nice one. My father, wisest man I ever met in my life, left school in the third grade to help out on the family farm, but just because he left school doesn't mean his edu education stopped. Mark Twain once said, I've never allowed my schooling to get in the way of my education. My father taught himself how to read, taught himself how to write, decided in the midst of Jim Crowism, as America was breathing the last gasp of the Civil War, my father decided he was gonna stand and be a man. Not a black man, not a brown man, not a white man, but a man. He literally challenged himself to be the best that he could all the days of his life. I want to share something with you. The wisest man I ever met in my life never made it past the third grade, impacted tremendously me and my brother. Growing up right here in Vallejo, this, this was our family. This, Academy was our backyard. Going on that training ship and getting lost, sneaking into the pool, going to all the different places for nearly 30 years. This was home. And I want to tell you, I know what it takes to get where you are. And I need you to listen to me very carefully. I have four degrees. My brother is a judge. We're not the smartest ones in our family. 
It's a third grade dropout daddy. Uh, a third grade dropout daddy who was quoting Michelangelo when he was a cook at Cal Maritime, saying to us, boys, I won't have a problem if you aim high and miss, but I'm going to have a real issue if you aim low and hit. Uh, a country mother quoting Henry Ford, saying if you think you can or if you think you can't, you're right. You see, it takes knowledge and wisdom combined to grow your influence so that you'll make a, an impact. You'll be a shipmate that others can count on. I learned that from a third grade drop. Simple lessons, lessons like these. Son, don't judge people. Son, I've worked at Cal Maritime. You know, I've been all over the world. I've seen good and bad in every shade. Don't judge people. The tendency of a person is to walk away from somebody that's different from them. You stay there and you get to know them. Never judge. Then he dropped Jonathan Swift on me, who said vision is the ability to see the invisible. Don't judge. Another lesson from this third grade dropout. Son, you'd rather be an hour early than a minute late. We never knew what time it was at my house because the clocks were always ahead. We were on Cal Maritime. Come on, somebody. Watch this. My father had the breakfast and lunch shift here at the academy. He had to be at work at five o'clock. We lived on tennis, we lived on Louisiana Street, 15 minutes away. My mother said for nearly 30 years, my father left the house at 3.45 in the morning. One day she asked him, why daddy? He said, maybe one of my boys will catch me in the act of excellence. I wanna share two things with you. Aristotle said, you are what you repeatedly do. Therefore, excellence ought to be a habit, not an act. Don't ever forget that. The other thing I want to share with you is Harvard Business Review, September 2004. The article is titled Deep Smarts. Here's the thesis. Lecturing, what our universities are based upon, is the worst kind of teaching method, usually. <laughs> Present company excluded. <laughs> that if you want to get the intended message across, model the behavior. My daddy, a third grade dropout, a cook, was modeling excellence for his boys. Combining academic knowledge and old school wisdom, that's what makes an impact. An impact as you go all over the world. You're not interested in making a nice impression. You want to make an impact. Lesson number three, be kind to people. He always told us kind deeds are never lost. I get to do a lot of NFL chapels. You see some amazing things with those National Football League players. You see guys that can bench press 200, 300 pounds 20 times. You see folks that are huge, that can run like a deer. You see folks from a flat-footed position jump 40 inches, 40-inch vertical leap. I even saw a white guy do it once. But the point... <laughs> you know what stops me in my tracks? When I see one of those rich folks show kindness. It literally stops the world. George Washington Carver said, when common people do common things in uncommon ways, they command the attention of the world I just described, your grandmother. I know you're tough. I know you're seaworthy, but always remember to be kind. Always. Don't ever forget that. Never embarrass mama. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. If daddy ain't happy, don't nobody care. But you know, I'm trying to tell you. Next lesson. Lesson from a cook over there in the galley. Son, make sure your servant's towel is bigger than your ego. I want to remind you cadets of something as you graduate. Ego is the anesthesia that deadens the pain of stupidity. <laughs> Y'all might have a relative in mind you want to send that to. Let me say it again. Ego is the anesthesia that deadens the pain of stupidity. Pride is the burden of a foolish person. You'll never be a great shipmate. You'll never be a great executive. You'll never be a great teammate if it's all about you. You'll never be a great supervisor or council person if it's all about you. You'll never be a great staff member if it's all about you. Rather, make sure that servant's towel is always big. On, on President Cropper's bookshelf, in his bookshelf, he has everyone from, every book from Plato's Republic to Lessons in Leadership by Coach Wooden. John Wooden coached basketball at UCLA for a living but his calling was to impact people. And with all those national championships, guess what he was found doing in the middle of the week? Going into the cupboard, grabbing a broom, and sweeping his own gym floor. You wanna make an impact? Find your broom. 
every day of your life, you find your broom. You grow your influence that way. That way you're attracting people so that you can impact them. Final lesson. Son, if you're going to do a job, do it right. I don't have to tell you all that, Cal Maritime, and I know grammatically that's not correct. It ought to be do it well, but I like that old school ghetto kind of <laughs> do it the right way. I'm thinking about a little boy in Los Angeles. All he wants to do is play Little League Baseball. His mother can't even afford to buy him a glove. And he eventually plays Little League, and he's really good. And he's so good he gets a scholarship to Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. And he's so good he gets drafted by the San Diego Padres. And he's so good he helps the St. Louis Cardinals win a World Series. And 12 years ago when Ozzie Smith walked into the Hall of Fame, he said during his induction speech, and in part I quote word for word, he said, I've always been told how average I can be. Always been criticized about being average. But I want to tell you something. I stand here before you, before all of these people, not listening to those words, but telling myself every single day to shoot for the stars, to be the best that I can be. Good enough isn't good enough if it can be better. And better isn't good enough if it can be best. That's the California Maritime way. Good enough isn't good enough if it can be better. Better isn't good enough if it can be best. Let me close with a very personal story that I think will bring all this into focus. Wisdom will come to you in the unlikeliest of sources, a lot of times through failure. When you hit rock bottom, remember this, while you're struggling, rock bottom can also be a great foundation on which to build and on which to grow. I'm not worried that you'll be successful. I'm worried that you won't fail from time to time. The person that gets up off the canvas and keeps growing that's the person that will continue to grow their influence. Back in the 70s, to help me make this point, let me introduce you to someone. I met the finest woman I'd ever met in my life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Back in my day, we'd have called her a brick house. <laughs> I was going to that great academic institution in the North, Chico State. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> probably studying really hard. <laughs> Let me just put it to you like this. I, I haven't always been a preacher, if you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> this woman was the finest woman I'd ever seen in my life. There's just one little problem. Back then, ladies didn't like big old linemen. The blind side hadn't come out yet. <laughs> <laughs> they, they like quarterbacks and running backs. Any former quarterbacks or running backs here? Raise your hands. Why, a couple of you? Punks. Anyway, so. <laughs> We're at this dance, and I find out her name is Trina Williams from Lompoc, California. And, and we, we're all dancing, and we're, we're just, just excited. And I decide in the middle of dancing with her that I would ask her for her phone number. She, Trina was the first one. Trina was the only woman in college who gave me her real telephone number. <laughs> the next day, we walked to Basket and Robin's ice cream parlor. My friends couldn't believe it. This has been 40 years ago, and my friends still can't believe it. We go on a second date, and a third date, and a fourth date. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we drive from Chico to Vallejo so that she could meet my parents. My father meets her, my daddy, my hero. He meets her, pulls me to the side and says, is she psycho? But anyway, <laughs> we go together for a year, two years, three years, four years. By now, Trina's a senior in college. I'm still a freshman, but I'm working some things out. <laughs> I'm so glad I graduated in four terms. Nixon, Ford, Carter, Reagan. <laughs> so now it's, it's, it's time to propose. So I talk to her girlfriends and it's California. It's in the 70s, so it has to be outside. You have to have a candle and you have to have, you know, some chocolate. Listen, I'm from the hood. I had a bottle of Boone's Farm wine. That's what I had. <laughs> she said yes. That was the key. I married the most beautiful woman I'd ever seen in my life. Y'all ever been to a wedding and even before the wedding starts, you hear this. How in the world? <laughs> and it was coming from my side of the family.
We get married, we have a few children, our lives are great. One day, Trina finds a lump in her left breast. Breast cancer. Six years after that diagnosis, me and my two little boys walked up to mommy's casket. And for two years, my heart didn't beat. If it wasn't for my faith in God, I, I wouldn't be standing here today. If it wasn't for those two little boys, there would have been no reason for which to go on. I was completely lost. That was rock bottom. You know what sustained me? The wisdom of a third grade dropout. The wisdom of a simple cook from California Maritime Academy. We're at the casket in College Station, Texas. I'd never seen my dad cry. Big, strong man. There are several alumni that remember Riggs that are here. We've been sharing stories all weekend. But this time I saw my dad cry. That was his daughter. Trina was his daughter, not his daughter-in-law. And I'm right behind my father, about to see her for the last time on this earth. And my father shared three words with me that changed my life right there at the casket. It would be the last lesson he would ever teach me. He said, son, just stand. President Cropper, Captain Bolton, Rear Admiral DeQuatro, I don't think there's anything more profound that I can share with these cadets than these words. You keep standing. You keep standing, no matter how rough the sea, you keep standing. And I'm not talking about just water. You keep standing. No matter what you don't give up. I learned that lesson from a third grade dropout who was a cook at Cal Maritime, who said, boy, you keep standing, no matter what. I stood and a miracle took place. A couple of years later, my heart started to beat again. I'm talking in a group about like this when all of a sudden I spot the finest woman I've ever met in my life again. <laughs> First thing Janet did after we got married was she adopted those little boys, fulfilling Trina's last wish that her babies not go through life without a mommy. And then we decided to do something really bright. We thought 16, 17 years ago, and that was have more children. It's worked out lovely. And I'm honored to tell you that we had more boys. I have four boys from 34 years old all the way down to my daddy's youngest grandson, who's here with me this weekend, Joshua Rigsby, sitting on the front row right there. I close with this. I close with this, and this will make the point more salient than any of my previous words. Let me take you back to two days before Trina died. No hair because of chemotherapy, cadets. A tummy pooched out because of a liver no longer working. She weighed about 75 pounds. I'm in the kitchen so I can keep an eye on her in the family room. She's surrounded by pillows. Our then youngest son, Andrew, walks up with a shirt that he wants mommy to fold. And this is what I hear from Trina. Andrew, mama, not always gonna be there to help you. She was saying goodbye. And I was so moved, I waited for Andrew to leave and I walked over and I sat next to her on the couch. And as clearly as I'm talking to you today, these were some of her last words to me. She looked me in the eye and she said, it doesn't matter to me any longer how long I live. What matters to me most is how I live. Cadets, I've come here with honor, with bells on, to ask y'all one question, a question that I was asked all my life by a third grade dropout. How you living? How you living? Every day, ask yourself that question, how you living? Here's, here's what a cook in the dining center would suggest you to live this way, that you would not judge, that you would show up early, that you'd be kind, that you'd make sure that that servant's towel is huge and used, that if you're gonna do something, you do it the right way. That, that, that cook would tell you this, that it's never wrong to do the right thing, that how you do anything is how you do everything. And in that way, you will grow your influence to make an impact 
In that way, you will honor all those who have gone before you, who have invested in you, from teachers to grandparents to mom and dad. And when you combine that academic knowledge with that wisdom, oh my goodness, you will change the world. So to the class of 2017, it is with great honor that I say all your life, look in those unlikeliest places for wisdom. Enhance your life every day by seeking that wisdom and asking yourself every night, how am I living? May God richly bless y'all. Thank you for having me here.